Alfrey is reviewing John Woodard's estate documents in hopes of finding out what happened to her great-grandfather. Entitled to said estate, Martha Blunt, yep. formerly Woodard. That was John Woodard's daughter, sounds like. Yep, it could be, yep. She is inheriting one Negro girl named Millie. Yeah. Valued at $1,000 to Laura Woodard, our Negro girl named Harriet, valued at $500 to William Woodard, one Negro boy named Alec. Alec is now referred to as Alec. Alec, yes. You know what? This is weird. What's that? Some of my older aunts and uncles called him Alec. You're kidding, see? And the younger one said Alec. Wow. So William Woodard gets our Alec, mm -hmm. valued at $700. So this is, what year is this? 1856. Alec is probably 15, 16. About 15 or 16. So yeah. he is entering prime trading value years. Exactly. And that's, he's probably now worth the cost of a car in today's money. So this is, a, this is Yikes. almost the eve of the Civil War, right? Oh, Lord. And he's most likely on his own or going to be separated from the group that he's, his family that mm -hmm. he's been with. Mm -hmm. This all makes me anxious. Yeah. Did he even stay in Georgia? I didn't think we were Georgia people. Maybe right. they didn't even stay in Georgia. So what I'm going to do is do some digging to try to find out what happens as we get closer to the Civil War and see if I can find out anything else about William Woodard and where Alec might have been after this time period. We'll see if we can find him. All right, it's great. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. You know my play sister. Oh, yes. <laughs> We're kin now, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Okay. In this moment, I feel like I'm on the cusp of something. The way you expect the arrival of a child. I'm chasing a spirit. I want to discover who Alec is. He had enough of his humanity compromised. I just want him to be who he is. So hopefully, Alec will speak to us somehow. Driving in Houston County, following a lead to track Alec. Half mile, turn left onto Houston Lake Road. That's my traveling companion. I call her Marva. Sometimes if I if I don't take the turn, she says she goes, uh, I said turn left. Last night, Dr. Barry looked into the deed records for John Woodard and found the land that he owned when my great grandfather was living there. So I'm gonna go have a look at that spot. You know, I don't know how I'll feel when I see it, but I will in my own way mark that moment. In a quarter mile, turn right onto Woodard Road. Okay. Ah! <laughs> well, I guess that's a good name. Turn right onto Woodard Road. Oh, Lord. My family, other African-American families, we always pour our libation to the ancestors. It's a way of connecting with Alec on the ground that he worked, that he sweated into. You acknowledge that you didn't invent yourself, that you come from somewhere, that you're part of the continuum. It's a way of humbling yourself to the ancestors. I'm on my way back to see Dr. Barry. I'm curious as to what else she's turned up about Alec. Do you so, know where I got these? Where did you get these from? I got these on Woodard Road. Oh. So I went to the land. Alec worked uh -huh. for a period of his life. I had to walk it in my bare feet. Oh, that's powerful. 
You have to, otherwise I never arrived. Right. Yeah. I'm wondering what happened to my great-grandfather after he was given to William Woodard. Right. We have another document where I found William Woodard in the census records. Slave inhabitants in Jackson Parish, 13th day of December, 1860. And so each of these records are the names of the slaveholders, and then their slaves are itemized. The only challenge is we don't have their names. So we have to go by approximate birth dates and sex. Jenkins, William Wood, Woodward. Ah, William. Yes. William, he moved to Jackson Parish. Exactly. He's in Louisiana. There was migration west, so they're starting to move mm -hmm. to Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana. There's more land there. So William brought a 32-year-old female, a 16-year-old male, and an 8-year-old male with him to Louisiana. He was born in 1841, but this says 16. Alex should be around 19 by now. Right. When you have census records, they could be off by a year or two. And even any time a slave person was given an age because they didn't have birth certificates, mm -hmm. right? So this is likely your great-grandfather mm. and him traveling with William Woodard and two other enslaved people going to Louisiana, Jackson, Paris. Oh, he was separated from most of his family. Exactly. Yeah. I think now that we know they're in Louisiana, mm -hmm. we, you need to go to Louisiana and look through the records at the state archives. In Baton Rouge, then? Yes. The state archives? Yes. Because a lot of the parish records are kept there, but the problem is a number of records were burned during the Civil War. It's really difficult to trace African Americans during the Civil War period. I would imagine. We could maybe pick them back up after the Civil War in okay. 1865. So, okay, yeah. I'm going to Louisiana. Yes. Going to Baton Rouge. Maya said, I come bringing the gifts my ancestors gave. Mm -hmm. I am the dream and the hope of the slave. Alec went from being an ancestor to a relative today. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs>